Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Dan and you're watching Resto Car, your source for DIY content to help you finish those builds. All right guys, so today's video is an update video to let you guys know where I've been and to show you guys around the new old shop. All right guys, so basically it disappeared for a little bit because we decided to buy a new home. Uh, we weren't planning on moving, but something came up in the area that was uh, finished. It does not need updated, which is good. Our other house needed updated, all that kind of stuff. So we figured it would just be easier to move um, instead of updating the old house, mostly because I spend most of my time now on the weekends working on resto car. So uh, basically I don't have time to work on the house and all that other kind of stuff. So we took care of selling the old place. We got the new place, did some housework in the new place, and now I'm ready to get to resto car again. So I don't know if we'll have a video every weekend right now, but uh, eventually we'll get back there. So, so basically what I'm spending my time on now is just getting this old Quonset hut updated so that I can run my welder, my air compressor, so that I have lights in here and you know, getting the essentials right now just so I can get back to working on the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of tell you a little bit about the shop and uh, then talk about some of the challenges and stuff that we're gonna have here, but uh, all's good. So basically what I have here is a 45 foot by 90 foot Quonset hut and the thing's old, it's very old. The previous owner said that he believes it was here in the 50s. I don't have a date or anything on that, but it definitely uh, looks pretty old, but it's in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and walk around and talk about some of the challenges here. All right, guys, so just walking around. Here's the entranceway. This is on one side of the building here. You can see over here we got the car and we got our barn doors right here to kind of get in. Got windows, we got lots of windows in here. This right here is to the well outside. This building has its own electrical and its own well, which is nice. And then you can kind of get a look at the steel framing and stuff that we have here. So it's, uh, it's all in really good shape. Get a nice look of it there. So all this stuff's pretty good. Where we have some problems is, is down where the, the building sits on the concrete foundation. I forgot to mention, but this building used to belong to a farmer who lived over on that side. There's a house across the road over there. I believe that's where he used to live. And he would park all of his equipment in here and he would come in through the building on that side. Uh, eventually the person that I bought my house from bought this off of him uh, because he was you know, worried about somebody turning this into something else. So the other, the other cool thing about this building is, you know, it's, it's got a history like any other building, a, from what I heard, they used to play bingo back in here. You can see the two by fours running across over there in the back half of the building. There was only a couple up here. They must've fell down over the years, but I've ripped them down and eventually I'm gonna take this down as well. But uh, they used to have a ceiling with some insulation and uh, they used to play bingo and whatnot back in here too. So, so continuing walking around, we got plenty of space and you can see the whole building has concrete in it. Got the Camaro right here. I'm excited to get back to it. You know, we were making really good progress on it. I'll give an update at the end of the video. A little sneak peek of what the Detroit Speed uh, three inch drop springs are gonna look like there. They look really good, like the stance. All right, so continuing walking down, we got a flue here in the middle and there used to be some kind of uh, furnace, wood burner, cool stove, something in here. So. Uh, we may take advantage of that and hook it back up, but it depends. I don't know how well it'll work if we don't have a ceiling with insulation in here. So we need something pretty big to, to overcome that. Uh, this is the previous owners. I don't have a motorcycle. I used to, not anymore. He's just, uh, he's going to sell it here pretty soon once it gets nice out. So walking down and I got all my junk kind of piled up. The nice thing with the space is I can lay out all the parts. So all this stuff back here is... Camaro stuff for the most part. And I got a table full of Camaro stuff right here. So what's gonna be really nice is I can just get a couple more tables and really lay these parts out and kind of inventory everything I have. So really like that idea. So walking to the back of the building, you can see we got a door back here. These are all boarded up and sealed shut. We just don't use this stuff. And then basically the neighbor's property is on the other side. And the neighbor that owns that property lives across the road right here. So I don't really have a need to use these doors at all. 
All right, guys, and then continuing on here, we have the electrical panel. The thing that kind of stinks is that it's in the back of the building and I'm gonna be working in the front of the building. So all the wires and everything I run, I'm gonna to have to run uh, a good bit up there, but that's okay, not a big deal. And then we have random switches. I don't know what those are for. These are for the lights that were in here. So if I turn those on real quick, You can kind of see just down the sides there, so they weren't that bright. But by the time I'm done with my shop lights up there, it's going to light up pretty nice. So go ahead and turn those back off. The one thing I need to do is update some of the electrical here. Um, this, I don't know if it's MC or AC cable or whatever, but I used to live in a house that was about 70, 80 years old. And all the wires in the basement, they looked like this gooey black stuff, right? So it just doesn't give you a good feeling. So what I'm gonna do is replace this stuff with some updated MC cable. And then when I'm doing that, basically what I'm gonna do is run the switches to the front of the building so that when I come in, I can flip them on instead of having to walk to the back of the building. And I'm gonna change the way the circuits are. So right now there's a circuit over here and a circuit over here, and I'm gonna split it so that there's a circuit in the front half and a circuit in the back half here. So I don't think I'll spend a lot of time in the back half of the building. The next thing is I need some outlets. They got outlets just kind of scattered around. And what I'm not sure about is if I want to run conduit or MC cable. I guess it kind of depends on how low. I think if I run the MC cable along the top and then just drop it down, it would be okay. You can see how they did this over here. I don't really trust this stuff. It looks pretty old. But this is all like... But this this is all just old cable it's sticky like I, I don't know what's up with it and then we got some old boxes here and receptacles you can see right there that that cable is sitting right on that metal right there eventually that can wear out and uh, then you have some electrical problems so i want to fix all this up i want to rip all this out and put in some conduit or mc cable either or and then drop down some outlets the thing is, is that that conduit is going to have to run straight across this way or we go up high and then we drop it down, but then I have to make bends with the conduit. So the simplest thing to do, I think, would be to run the MC cable and just kind of ride it down through here and then put an outlet, you know, like that. So I may end up doing that, I think. But let me know what you guys think in the comments, how you would wire this building up as far as using conduit, where you would put it, um, or running MC cable how you'd attach the outlets, all that kind of stuff. Let me know what you guys think. So the first thing that I gotta get hooked up is the air compressor. Obviously this hobby is very hard without a compressor. So let me know what you guys think about the best location for the air compressor in here. Like would I be better off putting it mid shop or back in the corner? Um, I don't mind putting it back there, but again, I don't want it, the noise kind of on that side. I'm trying to keep the noise on this side of the building thought about building something around that to kind of soundproof it but I'm worried about the heat and everything getting stuck in there so I mean when you're doing body work this thing it's a really good air compressor but it runs non-stop whenever you're in that body work phase and repairing rusted metal and all that kind of stuff so the second thing I need to do is run the electrical for where's it at where's my welder second thing I need to do is run the electrical for the welder and I think I have it hidden back here somewhere. Yeah, over here. So, got the old uh, Hobart 187 back there. So we got to run some electrical for that. And because it has a 50 amp plug end on it, and then I, I install a 50 amp receptacle, I like to make sure that the wire is actually capable of 50 amps. So I believe with this Hobart 187 that you can get away with running a 30 amp circuit and just putting a 50 amp receptacle on the end of it. but. I don't like doing that. I like to make sure that if there's a 50 amp receptacle that there's a 50 amp circuit. So I have the, I have the breaker and the receptacle. So I just got to get the wire, but I got to run that again, at least to halfway there. Ideally, maybe up even further, but I still got to do my homework on all that. So that's the welder all right guys so next thing on the list is we got to deal with these windows it's raining today and you can see that water is just dripping in here 
and it's it's not raining too bad right now i have some other footage i took when it was pouring down rain and it was just coming in like crazy but the windows hopefully we can see this they have a frame on the outside and then it looks like the whole unit is just held in with these clamps right here so what i think is i can drop this whole thing out and put something else in there i thought about repairing these but they're in really bad shape as far as rust and holes and everything goes and i'd rather spend that time working on my car so i don't know what i could put in here yet i haven't looked it up yet but obviously there's um one option is to get rid of the windows but i don't really want to do that i like having the light come in so let me know what you guys would put in here it looks like it's straight whatever they put in here it's not curved with the building so that at least makes it easier I can repair the frame, the outer frame, wherever I need to, and then we can put something in there that fits. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys would do there. So the next thing up we got to deal with is that you can see we got a couple leaks, I'd say about 10 or so, where it's just dripping in from somewhere up there. And over here, this is the worst one where it's dripping in. So I went around just dropping bricks wherever uh, leaks are at, but this one is the worst of it. From what I can tell, I'm thinking that where you see those uh, black marks right there on the building is probably where that's coming in at, but I haven't crawled up there yet to actually see that. So anyway, we gotta figure out what to do to stop that from happening. I've, I've never used flex seal before but i was at lowe's and i was like huh maybe i should try this out but i didn't buy it yet because i wanted to do a little research and see all right guys so next up you can see we got lots of holes in the building it's right there can't wait to see what kind of animals i come in here to but uh, we got holes there you can see daylight up top a little bit and then some up there um we have some more over here. You can see under this door, just daylight. And then over here, the foundation's in really good shape. This part here looks like it just cracked apart a little bit down there, but you can see we got holes there. Lots of places for animals to come in. So we'll have to fix all that. I don't necessarily know yet what I'm gonna do there. And then of course we got more holes like up front where the door and everything is. So um i'll likely be sharing this place with some uh mice rats snakes squirrels chipmunks whatever you name it all right guys so now let's talk about the floor a little bit the floor is okay i mean it's good enough to work in but it's but it's definitely not even all around this side's actually the better side but i don't want to work on this side because i'm gonna make a lot of noise with air tools and everything and i don't want to annoy my neighbors so i'm trying to keep all the work up front uh as far as there's like it's broken up in like four 10 foot slabs and this whole side i don't know if you can see it in the video but this whole side here like is sunk down but the rest of it's pretty flat so you can see here where it just kind of dropped and then kind of goes back there so but it's like that the whole way down I'm not going to mess with that. It's just something to note. It's another problem with the building. Over here we have a drain and then there's one on the other side as well. And then outside the building there is a uh, larger drain and none of them work. They, when it rains hard, they all fill up with water. And then this fills up with water. It doesn't come into the building, but it goes from being, you know, when you look down the pipe, it goes from being, I don't know, water sitting at three or four feet all the way up close to the top there. So um, there's a pond out here. I'm working on getting this cleaned out and drained and I'm wondering if these drain into that pond, but I don't know. Maybe they don't drain anywhere. So next up, talk about lighting. So with the lighting that was here, you can see that uh, video of the car is not good. It's not enjoyable. You guys wouldn't like it. Uh, it'd be hard to see things. I'd have to get spotlights out everywhere and you'd have shadows and all kinds of other stuff. So you can see how hard it is to see anything in the car. If you're working on it at home, you know, there's there's two reasons, I guess, to upgrade your light. One would be if you're filming videos, you would want good light because 
good light makes better video quality. And then of course, when you're working on your car, you can barely see what's going on in there. So you'd have to get spotlights, you know, whatever to make that uh, better for you. Especially if you're on the bodywork stage where you're really trying to fine tune everything there and make it look good, it's gonna be hard. So let's go ahead and plug in the lights. So right now I have 12 of them up there. I'm going about every eight feet with lights. So right now my ISO is at 2500. So it's pretty dark. So again, just remember this is temporary. We're gonna get all these wired into outlets up there and let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so instantly my ISO dropped to 1000 and you can see how much better that looks and how much better the video looks. So if you're doing your body work and everything, you know, you can see this a lot easier. You can see inside the car a lot easier. So one of the reasons I like to run the lights generally, I like to run the lights parallel is because when the lights coming down, it'll go into the sides and everything like that as well. But when you got enough light, it doesn't really matter. So much better, same walk around here. So pretty cool. So we're making it there. We got one more strand of lights to hang up. We'll be, so we got that one. So we're gonna put another strand right here for right now. And that's all the lights I bought. I don't know if I will run same amount of lights back there again just because i'm not going to be back there but the lights i use are these sunco shop lights these are the same lights i put in my other garage and it really increased the quality of the video and everything um what i'm after when i do lights is the 5000k so again i'm not going to make a video on installing these or anything there's tons of them out there um but if you're interested i'll put a link in the description this is my second set of 16 so 32 total and I'd have, I didn't have any problems with the lights in the other garage. For the price, 16 of them for $300 on Amazon, it's a pretty good deal. So, and the quality is, is pretty good too. So the other option would have been high bay lights and they run about, for what I would need, they would run about $150 a piece. And I would assume at a minimum, I would need four in this half of the building. Um, but possibly more because I don't like it when I don't have an even disbursement of light across the garage. So if I got a dark spot somewhere, it drives me crazy. So I don't know because I haven't messed with the high bay lights, the high bay LED lights, they look like UFOs or whatever, but I'm worried they would leave me with some dark spots around the side unless I put enough of them in there. But I don't know. The other, the other issue I have is I just don't want to go up that high and run electrical and all that kind of stuff so i'm using what's here and what's here is what's over there right now so that's where we are with lighting the front lights right now they're sagging a good bit i put the steel cable up and i didn't have turnbuckles i thought i could tighten it enough just by pulling on it but i can't so uh, these two rows of lights here there's turnbuckles on each end and what i mean by that is i just got two of these, one on each end, and then uh, you can tighten them up and tighten that steel cable up, so. Okay, so lighting is underway. So another thing that I'm a little bit concerned about in the building is just noise in general, um, especially when you're running like cheap air tools, they're just so loud. Again, what I'm, what I'm trying not to do here is it's, I know it's gonna, the sound is just gonna echo through this building, right? And my neighbor's house is like right across the road right there, so. I'm trying not to annoy them. At the other house, I'd be up until midnight working. Um, sometimes early in the morning, I'd start. So I gotta figure out a good way to kind of keep the sound down a little bit in here. All right guys, so the next thing in, on the list of things that I gotta think about is just heating and cooling. It's uh, almost at the end of April right now and it's freezing out here today. I had the torpedo heater running a little bit, but um, you know, the building's not insulated, it's huge, it's, uh, the uh, heat's not really going to do much, so um, not sure. I thought about putting a ceiling and stuff back in, but I just don't know if I want to do that. So I don't want to spend a lot of money on this building um, just because of how old it is and all that. So, um, but anyway, yeah, got to find a, a good way to 
um, heat it or keep myself warm in the winter. In the summer, I'll be able to manage. I know it's gonna be super hot in here. Uh, when that sun's beating down on this building, it's going to be really hot in here. So, but uh, I think we can get by with some fans and, and some other stuff there. So I thought about like an inch of spray foam insulation in here, but with all the leaks and stuff, I feel like it would just rust from the inside out at that point. So if you guys got any interesting ideas around heating and cooling something like this, just let me know in the comments down below. Quick update on the car. I did finish the driver's side torque box. I filmed a good bit of it, but I decided not to post it just because um, it was so similar to the other side. Um, I don't know. And then I also got the back half of the car under, underneath of it stripped down and epoxy primed. So what's left underneath the car is I have some plug wells that need cleaned up where I welded the wheelhouses and the tail pan, all that stuff together. Um, even though it's underneath there and you'll never see it, I still want to clean it up, make it look good. And then I have to weld the e-brake brackets back onto the car. And then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and Raptor line the underside of the car. So um, I have all that stuff. I purchased it. It's ready to go. So we're ready. So I think next time the lights will be done. I'll be underway with the, the air compressor and welder, so hopefully we get something there. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will put the tip over jigs back on the car and get the car flipped up and get back to work. So uh, if you haven't seen the tip over jig video, I'll link to that in this video. It's pretty cool. They worked really well and they were super sturdy. I mean, I was pushing on this car, hammering on this car. Those torque boxes put up a good fight and those wooden jigs held up no splitting, nothing. So I definitely trust those and the plans that I put together on my website at restocar.com. All right guys, so that's sort of the building overview, the car update, where I've been. I've had a lot of subscribers uh, since my last video and this video, and I don't know which videos, I didn't really look to see which videos are pulling all you guys in. Um, but this channel is all about restoring cars at home. This is my hobby. I know you guys, it's your hobbies. I'm. You know, not a professional at this. I don't do this for a living. I write software for a living. So, um, but this is what I love to do. And um, I'm going to combine the software and car thing. I'm working on something for the website for you guys. So for all of you people that have subscribed, uh, that's what we do here on Rest of the Car. We restore cars at home, share that with you guys and uh, help motivate and encourage you all to finish your builds so that you're not the next person on Craigslist giving away a project in pieces. So, um, so yeah, that's it. And for all of you new people, if this is your first time watching my content, that's what we're all about here. And if that sounds good to you, consider subscribing, like, share, and we'll see you in the next one.